Hello, today we're going to talk about shadows because most of the times we've talked about the stylized shader without considering too much details on the shadows. But today, and considering that Jacko is about to premiere world premiere, we're going to talk about those issues and more. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Shiller Tips. Today we're going to explore this unfinished, badly ripped <laughs> model from the video game Guilty Gear Strive the story mode. So the story here is that we are going to construct a simple shader, simple stylized shader as best as we can as we already know, you know, we start with the light threshold, then we multiply the shadow color, and then we use the mix factor from that threshold to mix the light direction from the light texture against the shadow texture. Now, lighting is very important, specifically addressing the vertex shadows, because the way we use them, it's basically to, to limit the colors of the shadow, whatever you're getting the light direction as we have seen light can break or make your model and we have previous videos that talk about that in depth I want you to check them out like you're seeing right here I'm also trying to demonstrate this principle throughout all of my stylized uh, models because it is not only a Guilty Gear thing or a Grand Blue Fantasy or Dragon Ball Z shading thing. No, this is applied to everything you do as a stylized shader, okay? So remember, this model that I have right here, Ghislaine, is from the Mushoku Tensei anime, and she's not anywhere available on the internet. You can get her on my Patreon. But here is the process of what I went through, creating her light for the hair specifically in this case, and also her body. Of course, we always need to do some work regarding the normals in this case they are very basic normals on the face because i only wanted her to be posing with her uh, basic clothes and and sword but the principle is the same we want to demonstrate that you need to stylize your shadows because that's the main issue here so the way you do that is connecting those vertex colors to a diffuse bsdf converting that information to a color and then piping it through the color ramp to limit the shader's action okay and the shadow direction that you get from the light is going to also affect the surface on how you limit those vertices okay so here you can see the completed scene which like i mentioned before you can also get on my gum road and it is very important to continue stylizing and exploring artistic creative methods. Of course, shadow is always going to be an issue when you're working in EV with real-time um, shading. So please make sure that your shadows are also set to a required level of subdivisions. This is, this is a common issue even through Unity and also to Unreal. You have to define the shadow cascade size on any of these applications so uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that when you're creating your your stylized shaders or your model please notice how the missing vertex shadows or the missing vertex information is going to affect your shadows as you can see right here there is no not a clear definition between edges although the ILM map is doing its best to help you limit through a uh, bitmap method and back in the GTC 2015, someone was smart enough to ask Mr. Motomura what's up with shadows. Uh, for characters that cast shadows on themselves, do you kind of author the self-shadowed areas manually, or do you do something um, for, like, um, something special with lighting to deal with those? Okay, uh, so this question is about self-shadowing? Yeah. Okay, um, self-shadowing is one thing we wanted to do, but um, we didn't do. So basically, uh, we we um, we use the threshold mechanic instead. So hey, don't take it from me, but if your shadows are not looking good enough in your model, maybe you should try to add more effects in regards of the vertex paint plus the island map or a bitmap, black and white bitmap that delimits 
your zones. Also, modeling it's very important and will contribute to your model. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to try here on the Blender in the newest Solid Blender release was to create a freestyle line. And all I was getting was the above line, and what I was looking for is the down below with check with the green check icon line, which I could not reproduce in 293.2 but it was possible back in Blender 283. So if someone is watching this video or maybe you want to report this to a dev, there is no way that you can cap the line or make it round so that it will be affected by the stroke along the curve, curve manipulation, like you're seeing right here, because everything that you see here ends up abruptly, okay? And what we're looking for, it's a line that looks like this one that you're seeing right now on the screen, because that's the method that the free line um, pass used to work. So the closest I could get is this kind of thing. But if you are expert on freestyle or maybe you're tweaking freestyle because sometimes my videos are watched by uh, some of the developers as well. I will appreciate your reply down in the comment section below to help me get this freestyle settings working just right. Anyways, this beautiful render was completed using the outline by cold method using the solidify modifier. And this has been Pierre Schiller. So if you have not tried Blender, try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible.